football was certainly a lot different back in 1879. Michigan's first team, all 13 of them dressed in maize and blue. School colors picked by the class of 67. Well, they stormed into Chicago's White Stocking Park. After two innings of hard-nosed rugby football, Michigan was a winner, one nothing. Ike Pond was the hero. He scored the only touchdown, and Racine went home a loser. About 560 people showed up for that one. Bill did the first game west of the Alleghenies. And stout were those gentlemen who played that first game considering the uniform of the day didn't offer a great deal of protection. Dennis, I don't believe that I would wear one of those things to bed. <laughs> it's not right, Jim. Right. They don't offer you much protection. Well, let me tell you that, son. I don't think you can get in one. So what do you oh, think that, about that's that? That's beside the point. Besides, look at that beanie on top of your head. That's ugly. Oh, what can I say? I thought it looked pretty good, just like I got off the railroad. Now, you belong on a railroad. You play football on that. You had to be crazy. Well, what can I say there? You know, uh, this is the way it started. By the turn of the century, life of the athlete hadn't changed a great deal in 21 years. Most stayed in rooming houses, but there was a training table and players got plenty of meat and potatoes. Electricity wasn't that widespread yet, so lots of students did their studying by oil lamps, and they kept warm by the heat of the fire. Tuition in those days was only $30 for in-state students, $40 for out-state students. Once again, there were no scholarships for athletes, but there were reports that some coaches were offering to pick up expenses of certain athletes, which means you know the recruiting wars had already started. Students had plenty of fun in those days. They were going to theaters, and some even went to saloons, ignoring the anti-saloon league's credo that an alcoholic cloud was hanging over the university. Club dances and socials were the big thing. If you were an underclassman, you'd better not get caught on campus without a hat. You might get beat up. You know, football was experiencing tremendous growth in this period. Uh, two players on the 1907 team were over 200 pounds, so it wasn't growth physically, but rather it was growth by the people who played it. Dennis. Show me the uniform that they ill equip you with without much protection. Not much protection at all. Just your uh, knee pads. Elbow pad. Watch it. No shoulder pads. Well, how about your helmet, Dad? We didn't want to mess up your hair. Ah, uh, no helmets. The unskilled position of lineman wore this. What do you think? Dennis, I've got to be honest with you. I think that you look better with it on than you do with it off. Really? Yes, I do. I really do. You know, also, Dennis. Around the turn of the century, there's a problem in Michigan. Great concern because they're talking about having a new coach. Someone, that I think, by the name of Yost. Yost? Yost, yes. Is that like Fielding H? I believe that is his name. Do you know him? No. Neither do I. The Roaring Twenties. Flappers, bathtub, gin, and Fielding Yost. Well, he's become a legend. In the sporting world, along with guys like Newt Rockney, Babe Ruth, and Pop Warner, Michigan football's at its peak. Ticket prices reflected that. Five bucks for the choice seats at Perry Field. Training tables entrenched in those days. Roast beef, mashed potatoes, all the milk you could drink. They were getting beefy, and I'll tell you what, they needed to be beefy because the uniforms were getting a little better, believe it or not. Check this out. Quick geek quiz. Number 77, real quick. Who is it? This is number 77, the Galloping Ghost of Illinois Red Grange. They're getting a little sneaky back then. This actual jersey of Grange shows these panels. They put stick them on in those days. Kept the ball a little closer, didn't fumble it as often, but that was outlawed later. Want to see some helmets? <laughs> this will knock your eyes out right here. Didn't protect much, but that's what they wore back then. Freshman football players in those days stayed in rooming houses. On after that, it was to fraternity houses. Mitchell's Cafeteria in the Nichols Arcade in Ann Arbor was the place to go. Now, one player in on the 1925 squad weighed over 200 pounds, and players still had to work their way to school, and tuition was getting up there. $80 for residents, 105 for out-of-state students. Recruiting was done on an unofficial basis. Michigan, though, getting the best players. Guys like Oosterbein, Friedman, Kipke, and it was a time of prohibition, too. Don't forget that. Guys used to go to the movies, you know what I mean? See Charlie Chaplin. Then they'd go to dances at the Union. The freshmen still had to wear their hats. By the time the 1940s rolled around, Michigan Stadium was playing host to more than 80,000 people. And they were paying $2.75 a reserve seat and $3.30 for boxes. Boy, old Yo sure knew what he was doing, not only in building the stadium, but as an athletic director hiring coaches. His coach in the 40s was a guy named Fritz Chrysler. His star player, 
A guy named Harmon. And old number 98 and his crew sure knew what they were doing, and they were better dressed for it, Dennis. That's true, Jimmy. There's a helmet that was even worn by old number 98. And designed by Fritz Chrysler. And it is the traditional Michigan wing, which has become a great symbol of the university. That's right. It was pressed cardboard with a little leather. Getting a lot fancier, too, these days. Little hip pads, thigh pads, knee pads. Even got some shoulder pads now. Not all that bad. You're getting bigger, you got to get more protected. You must protect a player, and as the game grew, of course, the pads did, too. And Dennis, you know, players were better equipped in those days, but they still had to work their way through school. You see, scholarship programs hadn't been developed yet. As a matter of fact, Tom Harmon had to work his way through school bussing tables at the Union. And tuition was getting pretty expensive, $60 a semester in 1940. Training table remained the same for the athletes, steak, potatoes, and milk. You know, gas was only 39 cents a gallon then. Most of the entertainment were movies and dances. There wasn't any TV back then. If you did have one, you were lucky. The Arboretum had turned out to be the place to take your favorite girl for a walk. And if you wanted a beer, well, there was a new little beer parlor opening up downtown Ann Arbor. We called the pretzel back. But the 1940s also was a very dark period for Michigan football. You see, analysts saw trouble in Europe, and they predicted that President Roosevelt would declare war. He did. And many of the players of the day, well, they traded their pads for uniforms and went to war. Some of them never came back. It's now 1979, and there have been a lot of changes. Players nowadays don't spend the night before the game in trains. Uh, they spend them in nice hotels like this. But probably the biggest change of all has been the uniform. The uniform has gotten so much better and so much more sophisticated, players like Dennis have trouble getting hurt. That's true, Jimmy. It's uh, got me covered everywhere you can think, everywhere you can look. It looks like you are covered at every part of your body, are you? I think so. There's a couple spots here. Take, <laughs> <laughs> hey, for instance, this... This is television, and I'm not sure that this is proper to take off your pants. Well, you know, if I'm going to do it, I might as well go on. <laughs> we can't really do this kind of thing. I felt down, Dennis. I really don't think we ought to do this. Don't worry about it, Jim. You think it's all right? Well, it'll be all right. I'm just trying to help you out. What can I say, guy? <laughs> ah! These are the speed pads. I'll tell you what, that is one of the most definitive explanations of the 1979 uniform I think we've ever seen. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Tom, there you are. 100 years of Michigan football from 1879 and 1979. Something old, something new, not too much borrowed, but a lot very, very blue.